This is ABC 7 News at 6. Your Suncoast News. We're here for you. Good evening, I'm Haley Wilkes. Scott Dennis has the night off. Thanks for joining us. A DEP rule demanding organizations notify the public within 24 hours of a pollution event has now been thrown out by a Florida judge. And as ABC 7's Adam Cellini tells us, locals are frustrated to lose the law only after a few months. Yeah, because of the law, Sarasota County recently put out a notice after raw sewage was leaking for hours in this neighborhood near Bee Ridge Road. The residents who experienced it saying they should know every time something like this happens. As the cars were driving through this black sewage water, it was running down into the storm drain. Larry Walker's family got a stinky surprise this holiday when raw sewage began overflowing on their street. Well, literally water was spraying up higher than our heads out, out of the a plug line on the outside of the house. Around 100 gallons of waste had to be vacuumed that night. We know because the county told us an emergency rule requires they notify the public within 24 hours of a pollution event. An amicable policy, but also illegal according to a Florida judge. But in practicality, they skipped a step, and that uh, is worrisome. Becky Ayesh lobbied for several environmental laws as president of the Environmental Coalition of Southwest Florida and wasn't surprised when the judge ruled this one an overstep of DEP's legislative authority. And when they cry that mantra, that's when they go before the legislature and we get the rules reduced for our protection. So that kind of sets us up for taking a fall. She thinks Governor Scott was too concerned with saving face after the mosaic sinkhole disaster. He skipped passing a law through the proper channels, a mistake she hopes lawmakers will soon cover up. It really is imperative that the legislature legislators do something right away. That should be front and center on their plate. So we're going to wait and see how that happens. The governor's office says they will be reviewing the judge's ruling to determine what the next steps will be to make sure this or a similar law is passed soon here in the state of Florida. In Sarasota, Adam Cellini, ABC 7, your Suncoast News. Thank you, Adam. Florida may see a solution to its shortage of sand on some beaches. President Obama has signed a water resources funding bill. The 2016 Water Resources Development Act authorizes the Army Corps of Engineers to study the potential of using foreign sand locally. It will take sand from areas like the Bahamas to widen shorelines and protect the coasts from tropical storms and hurricanes. Record temperatures and little rain are giving an unwanted boost to the dry season. Brush fires are happening more often and the Sun Coast is not immune. ABC 7's Dwayne Lindo has the latest. Firefighters are preparing for a greater brush fire risk than years past, warning residents that it may be the beginning of an active wildfire season. As of this week, the Florida Forest Service issued Sarasota and Manatee counties fire danger in the moderate range, with Lee County just south of us at a dangerous level, among the worst in the state. Just last week, firefighters in Northport were called to two separate brush fires. The fires, unrelated, but both burned several acres. Fire officials say it may be the start of a troubling trend, with temperatures in the 80s and conditions drier than usual this year. Fire officials say some people have no idea just how quickly brush fires can become out of control infernos. So, as a recommendation, officials ask that no one burn anything outdoors. Officials say some rain will obviously help, but unless a lot falls, they expect current conditions to remain about the same. Reporting in Sarasota, Dwayne Lindo, your Suncoast News. Thank you, Dwayne. And for more on this drier weather, let's head over to Bob. Yeah, we'll show you the graphic that shows the Keech Bryram Index, and it really shows some dry conditions right here along the west coast of Florida. In fact, most of the state, now typically we get a lot of rainfall during El Nino years, and we're not going to have El Nino this particular winter, and that means a little drier than average weather expected and anticipated uh, through the first few months of 2017. Although, uh, we are going to see a real good chance of rainfall, though, by Saturday, and that rain chance will bring some showers and even a few thunderstorms. We don't like the lightning because it can generate uh, fires as well. You can see some big storms firing up across parts of the panhandle tonight and associated with that warm, moist air feeding into that colder air, and that's where the storms are really starting to blossom. And there are tornado watch boxes in effect from Louisiana stretching all the way over to Georgia and parts of Florida tonight, and the potential for tornadoes exist throughout the next several hours there. For us, we've had such warm weather today, 87 in Fort Myers at the Southwest Regional Airport, uh, and also 84 in Tampa, setting a record high. It was 83 here in Sarasota. 
just enough heat to kick off a few inland showers. More in our forecast. We'll talk about a couple of cold fronts headed our way coming up in a few minutes. Haley, back to you. Thank you, Bob. More than 200 people have signed a petition to stop rezoning, which would pave the way for manufacturing plants to be built in their quiet Palmetto neighborhood. This week, Manatee County Commissioners are considering the rezoning of nearly 13 acres of land from suburban agriculture to heavy manufacturing on Bayshore Road near the Rabonia border. Many people who live in that area are concerned with traffic, noise, and pollution that a manufacturing plant could bring with it. Why are we rezoning something not knowing what's going to come in here? We need to know what's going to be here before we understand what it is. It's the unknown that's so upsetting. Manatee County Commissioners will consider the request for rezoning of the land at a meeting on this Thursday. After years of back and forth, a former landfill in North Sarasota is a step closer to being redeveloped. Tomorrow, Sarasota City Commissioners will discuss possible options for the 13-acre piece of land on MLK just east of 301, also known as the Marion Anderson site. The city spent years cleaning up contamination at this former landfill, and in August of 2016, area residents filled out surveys which showed overwhelming support to redevelop the lot. But the effort is being met with mixed feelings. The city manager proposed to put infrastructure in to make it a warehouse type site. But we as a city commission s said, let's be a little bit more creative. Let's look for an opportunity that serves the economic interests of Newtown. Before they go in and try to develop that landfill, why not create a viable commercial district on MLK, which has already been zoned for a commercial use. During Tuesday's meeting, Sarasota City Commission members are expected to vote to issue an open call to developers who may want to transform this lot into something that will create jobs and help stimulate economic growth. Some residents want more parks to be built in the city of Venice, but the city says that's not necessary. City leaders there say there are already enough parks in Venice and they need to be used more efficiently. Some of the parks are hard to find, just appearing as large grass-filled areas between homes. Mayor John Hollick says Venice has a lot of park space, but much of it is not developed. All the area that we have that our people use for recreation, it far exceeds anything that the city of Venice would need as far out into the future as we can look. Mayor John Hollick adds the idea to add new park space is not out of the picture. He says he's not opposed to it as long as the public knows the costs involved. And still to come on your Suncoast new, uh, News, a new law making it more difficult for teens to get different types of cough medicine. Plus a jump in gas prices this year. Why? You'll see an increase at the pump. These are our heroes. They have sacrificed so much to serve our country. And now Granny Nannies is truly honored to serve them. We're here and we're ready to help. Call us today. Tomorrow at 5 on ABC 7's Good Morning Sun Coast. Hello, I'm Jacqueline Matter. Now that 2017 is here, you may have some new resolutions to keep track of, especially for your health. Tomorrow on Good Morning Sun Coast, we'll have tips on what you should do if you're just now starting a new fitness routine. John? An approaching cold front promises us some chillier temperatures. We'll have those details for you. Tomorrow at 5 on ABC 7's Good Morning Sun Coast. We're here for you. The official Sun Coast Storm Team at ABC 7. We're here for you. We consider the first 60 minutes the golden hour the time that we can do the most to affect how a patient's going to do. I think what motivates all of us is that at the other end of it, we see them, you know, smiling and happy and, and going back to their families. That's our greatest satisfaction. Sarasota Memorial Hospital is just an amazing place to take care of people. Don't miss the 19th annual Thunder by the Bay Motorcycle Festival, January 5th through the 8th to benefit Suncoast Charities for Children. This year's festival welcomes special guest Blue Oyster Cult to the premier sports campus at Lakewood Ranch on January 8th at 4 p.m. Admission is free. Festival events include a sporting clay tournament, kickoff party, welcome Thunder event, cruise for cash, charity motorcycle ride, and a two-day rockin' and riding at the ranch festival featuring vendors, live music, a taste of Thunder area, and more. VIP tickets are available. For tickets and info, visit thunderbythebay.org. 
Florida's last private island is a waterfront lifestyle like no other. This is Harbor Isle, just five minutes from the sugar sand beaches of Anna Maria Island. This sun-splashed paradise invites you to enjoy natural adventures and all the recreation of a tropical resort. Island coach homes and waterfront condos are now available from the high 400s. Don't miss the Luxury by the Bay event, Saturday, January 21st from noon till 4 p.m. at Harbor Isle. Water ski show, luxury cars, wine tasting, model home tours, and more. Hi, I'm Chef Judy. Every Wednesday morning, I'll be with the chefs at the Publix Aprons Cooking School, serving up the most wonderful dishes. Watch Aprons in the Kitchen every Wednesday on ABC 7's Good Morning Suncoast. At Granny Nannies, we provide your loved ones with the care they deserve, compassionate and experienced help right where you need it most, at home. Visit us at grannynannies.com. A helping hand and a gentle heart. Minors won't be able to buy some cough syrup brands over the counter here in Florida. A new law to curb underage substance abuse took effect today. The measure prohibits manufacturers, distributors, and retailers from selling medication containing dextromethorphan to kids under 18. The ingredient is used in many over-the-counter medicines, but has been misused by some people in the past to get high. The measure also requires anyone who appears under 25 years old to provide ID upon checkout. It's not an ideal way to start 2017, but the entire state of Florida will see a jump in gas prices at the pump. Oil analysts say the average price of gas nationally has jumped 18 cents a gallon over the last few weeks. Here in Florida, motor fuel taxes and diesel fuel taxes are rising one-tenth of a cent per gallon. Florida law requires annual adjustments to gas taxes be, be made based on changes in the consumer price index. Gas taxes in Florida vary by county because some counties have additional gas taxes. SpaceX says its rockets may return to flight as early as Sunday. The news comes following an in-depth investigation into the devastating September explosion of a rocket. A SpaceX rocket blew up on the launch pad at Cape Canaveral, destroying a $200 million communications satellite. Before launch, the Federal Aviation Administration will have to sign off on the crash investigation report and issue SpaceX a new license. Bob will be back with your full forecast after this. There's never been a better time to call California Closets. Now, during our Winter White event, save up to 20% when you upgrade to an Italian-inspired wood grain finish. Contact us for your free design consultation today. Visit our showroom or online at californiaclosets.com. Our community has its struggles. The fact is, people have less than they did just a few years ago, and sadly, the need becomes more profound every day. Season of Sharing provides funds to help individuals and families in need, ensuring they will not end up homeless and without a roof over their heads. Together, providing a helping hand and making a difference. Season of Sharing. Give today at cfsarasota.org. ABC 7's My Suncoast News app is better than ever with a brand new design that's faster and easier to use. Download our free My Suncoast News app on your mobile device at your app store of choice. Powered by the iAssociates, providing sight for life. Today, everyone is looking for more fashionable choices in flooring than ever before. And G. Freed has responded with a huge selection of carpets, tile, wood, laminate, and vinyl. Installed by a highly skilled team, G. Freed has got everything you're looking for and more. The next time you think about quality flooring, think G. Freed Flooring America. G. Freed Flooring America. Our world is at your feet. Sarasota Institute of Lifetime Learning begins its 46th season on Monday, January 9th in Sarasota, Venice, and Lakewood Ranch. Meet Blair Tyndall, author of Mozart in the Jungle on Monday, January 9th, and information and intelligence expert Terry Roberts on Tuesday, January 10th. 72 Global Issues lectures by renowned experts, 24 musical conversations with great performers. Tickets are on sale now. For more information and to purchase season tickets, visit sillsarasota.org. I heard about the Detoli Cancer Center through friends of mine who had been treated here and were very pleased with the treatment. If there is prostate cancer, we at the Detoli Cancer Center will find it using 3D color flow Doppler ultrasound. And that helped precisely identify where my cancer was. I can tell you that you will not find a finer, more professional team 
of clinicians anywhere in the world. There's never been a better time to call California Closets. Now, during our Winter White event, save up to 20% when you upgrade to an Italian-inspired wood grain finish. Contact us for your free design consultation today. Visit our showroom or online at californiaclosets.com. Well, Bob is back. Hopefully your vacation was nice. Yeah, it was we good. You. Yeah, we did a couple different things, you know. I did some uh, golfing and nice. it was nice, absolutely. And outdoor activities, uh, pretty warm. It was really. very warm. Went to so, the yeah. beach a couple times. My I brother's bet. in town and they're enjoying it. They're going to be going back to some cold, though. Oh, Unfortunately, yes. as uh, Arctic mm. air is starting to plunge southward once again. The Van Ways of Webcam showing a gorgeous day out there on the waters. Uh, really calm conditions. Seas running less than two feet. And uh, no real threat of any significant uh, problems as far as rainfall goes here, although we could use the rain, as we showed you earlier. It's uh, rather dry out there. Viewer photos, I wanted to show you this one. This is from uh, Janet Roop. Uh, this is uh, down near Venice at Sharky's Pier. She sent this just in. Happy New Year, Janet. We had lots of photos sent in. Had a great time down in downtown Sarasota as well as into uh, Manatee County. There's the fire danger scale. You'll notice the west coast of Florida has the highest danger as far as that goes on this uh, Keach Byram index. That's in the 500 to 599 category that you see in Sarasota. Uh, also into DeSoto and Charlotte counties, a little less, but still a problem in the Manatee and into Hardy counties at this point. So we'll keep an eye on that for you. We're going to look at uh, some beneficial rains that will move in on Saturday. Mainly it looks like right now Saturday will be the timing. It's not this storm system that's going to bring us the uh, good chance for showers and storms, although this one will bring us eventually some cooler air settling in on Thursday and Friday. Right now it's causing severe weather, tornadoes possible throughout the um, panhandle of Florida into Georgia as well as into Alabama tonight. There are numerous war uh, warnings out and watches out. Uh, these are the watches that you see right here in the red. The warnings are in the uh, yellowish area and the orange area. That's indicating severe thunderstorms at this point. Winds gusting as high as 60 miles an hour. These storms are not nearly as intense here. This is a result of the sea breeze front, really. Uh, plenty of moisture around. Temperatures in the upper 80s here inland, uh, causing just enough lift to create these showers and storms that you see uh, marching basically north. Uh, not much at all going along the coastline right now. It'll stay dry there. The only downside for the beaches could be the potential for some uh, sea fog rolling in. A lot of these uh, situations this time of year when you've got a cold front coming in, it brings this warm, moist air over the relatively cooler waters of the Gulf, and that causes uh, some of that thick sea fog to roll in, more so tomorrow night, but we could see some tonight too and tomorrow morning. But the tornado watch is in effect from Louisiana all the way over to Georgia tonight. So rough weather to our north. Not here, 75 degrees. Dew point way up there at 69. The winds are out of the south at 10. The pressure rising slightly at 30. 10, the high, one degree shy of a record. It topped out at 83 de uh, degrees today at the Sarasota Brady Airport. 84 is the record in this morning's low was at 64. So far dry for 2017. The weather headlines read like this. Warm through Wednesday and then some storms move in on mainly Saturday. There may be a few scattered showers up until then, but uh, the best chance for rainfall and widespread basis will be Saturday as a stronger cold front moves in. This particular forecast model indicating uh, some fog developing overnight tomorrow morning and then the sea fog rolling back on tomorrow evening and in through Wednesday morning. Nationally, there's some big storms to the north and west of us, and the one in the deep south is causing the severe weather to uh, be a problem there. But uh, you can see all these weather watches and warnings, mainly over the northern tier of states, uh, stretching out west into California. Uh, for us, we'll see a chance for showers and storms here. Temperatures in the 30s and 40s now, but look at this Arctic air that's moving in. This is what I'm talking about that will move eventually on into the northeast and throughout the Ohio Valley, it looks like, as we move through time. Uh, for boaters tomorrow, sea fog possible to start the day off, then burning off. South winds at 10 knots. Uh, seas will be 1 to 2 feet. Tides up coming on your screen. Low tide will be at 1038. Sunset at 549. We just had it. And then mostly fair fog developing. Will be warm tonight. Tomorrow, Tuesday, some fog, then partly cloudy. Near record-breaking highs once again. Slightly cooler on Thursday. We get back to average. That stays with us through Saturday. And then jackets and sweaters may be required by Sunday. Haley? Thank you, Bob. An authentic Italian restaurant is preparing to open its doors in the U.S., and the owner has chosen Palmetto as its first U.S. location. Chef Alessandro Usai is preparing to open this Italian restaurant and pizzeria called People. The building is located in Palmetto's Community Redevelopment Agency. Crews are finishing up renovations to this building, and the final interior work is almost complete. We pass uh, through the Florida, um, through Florida just just to go uh, from to Costa Rica, and uh, we, we love this, uh, this area. 
Uh, we, um, we visit some other places in Florida, like Miami, Fort Lauderdale, but what, what we think if this is very, very, very authentic Florida we were looking for. Usai and his family recently moved from Italy to the Sun Coast. Usai says he hopes to hold the restaurant's grand opening by the end of next week. Hi, I'm Linda Carson. Coming up, we'll introduce you to Caroline and Will. Theirs was a love story that ended tragically. First out the door when it matters most in the new year, Made in America is back. 200 reports and counting. He asks, he listens. When American jobs are on the line, he's right there. More Americans are turning to World News Tonight with David Muir, and we thank you. Designers do it with style. Tell me what's going on here. Because Why, you don't like my hair? The Mark and Mandy Show. In-depth design ideas. What is up with the tuck tape here? Let's cover it up. Amazing beauty and fashion tips. So Halle Berry has amazing skin. She Her secret it. is coffee ground. No. Delicious recipes. Today, I'm going to show you a special dish that is sure to please that special someone in your life. Watch the Mark and Mandy Show right here on your favorite channel. <laughs> Salon of ABC7. has once again swept the nation. And everyone is rushing to Florida to strike it doubly rich. Introducing the $5 million Gold Rush Doubler. We're doubling cash prizes for over $752 million in payouts. And 36 prizes from $1 million to $5 million. The Florida Gold Rush is on. The Florida Lottery, just imagine. Selling your home? Insist on a 3D showcase tour from Gulf Shores Realty. Virtual tours are flat and boring and look more like a slideshow than a tour. A 3D tour from Gulf Shores Realty is like actually walking through the home without the drive. Get instant access to your next home from any device. Multiple views give home buyers a perspective like no other. For a limited time, mention ABC7 and Gulf Shores Realty will provide a complimentary 3D tour with your new listing. I was always worried and scared. Mom was in pain. She wasn't going to get any better, and all the trips to the ER were painful for all of us. Then we called Tidewell Hospice, and everything changed. Now she has care in our home when she needs it, surrounded by family. We know we don't have much time left with Mom, but we decided to make the best out of that time. Tidewell Hospice, it's more than you think. Ever wondered who stood where you're standing now or who lived where you live now in the early days when the Sun Coast was first being settled? ABC 7's Linda Carson joins us now with a place we call home. Linda. Carolyn Sl Kathy Slusher's new book, From a Heavenly Land, Caroline's Story is a novel. It's based on historical facts, and Caroline Linda Mayer Fogarty was a real flesh and blood woman who helped shape this place we now call home. Caroline's family were German immigrants, lured to Florida in the 1880s by the state, hoping to create a German settlement. She lived near Ellington. She met Will Fogarty at a dance here in Bradenton, and they fell in love and got married. They moved to Fogartyville. Fogartyville was a small community. They had their own bakery and their shops. Uh, it was really a community of fishermen and, and seamen. And when Caroline and Will married, Caroline moved into this house with her in-laws and also with her mother, grandmother-in-law. She and Will had four children. He was killed in a shipwreck in 1906. He was on his boat, the Vandalia, and it was uh, just off of Cape, uh, Cape Marco near the Naples area when a storm came up and he was shipwrecked. He and all the crew were lost in the shipwreck and they never found his body. The memory stayed with his children forever. At one of the sons, Babe, 
Arthur Babe Fogarty told me about he and his brothers and sisters standing in the upstairs of the house, looking out the window, looking down the river, hoping to see their father sail home. In 1910, Caroline moved the family to St. Pete. Those were difficult days for women. And after her husband, Will, died, she actually had to petition the county government for guardianship of her own children because of the laws that were set with men being in control of property and, and finances. She got involved in the women's rights movement. And she and others like her paved the way for our world as it is today. When the Depression hit, the Fogartys lost much of their property because they couldn't pay their taxes. Fogartyville merged with Bradenton and disappeared. And with the arrival of the automobile, many of the Fogartys turned from the sea to ground transportation. And it started a moving company. Some people may have heard of Fogarty Brothers Transfer Company. Caroline outlasted Fogartyville by more than 70 years. She now lies in the Fogartyville Cemetery. She died at 102 in St. Petersburg, and her husband, because his marker was here, they brought her body back here to be next to his marker. After her husband's death, Caroline still lived with her mother-in-law, Eliza. And they say when Eliza got mad at Caroline, she'd throw $100 bills into the fire and threaten to burn Caroline's inheritance if she didn't obey her. So things were pretty tough back $100 then. $100 bills. <laughs> yeah. That was a back lot then, of money too, in the yeah. early 1900s, too. Of money and we figured out Caroline was 14 when she got married. Wow. Yeah. Can you imagine? Had four children by the time she was 24 and her husband died. Oh, my God. Goodness, that's a lot of living in a just short. Start now. I know, right? I mean, barely. Starting. We wouldn't let a 14 year old date. No, that's so true. That's a great story. Thank you, Linda. We'll see you tonight at 7.